None of this is rehearsed. <laughs> um, narrating the story of Star Wars as it was then, before the prequels, of course, because I went on to do another three movies after that. This is a garb, a gift that keeps, has kept, keeps on giving. Not only to the audience, but to me, because without C-3PO, I would have had to go out and get a real thing. <laughs> pretty much I never needed to, because three year has kept me busy and wonderfully entertained and, and injured and hurt and, mm -hmm. and frustrated and angry and all these things. For you do the last about 45, 46 years. Because I first met George Lucas in 1975. Many of you, many of you weren't born, is it? It's not really. Um, <laughs> And of course, uh, famously, um, I didn't. Uh, well, um, does anybody have a word of it? But how often did that, I found out spoken about the fans, the people who go to see the film, who pay to go to see the films, who connect with them, who enjoy them, and keep it all going? Because without them, there would have only been one film because there was no thought that it was going to be a success. We all thought it was rubbish. Carrie and Mark and Harrison and me. He said the lines which were not poetic at all. <laughs> but somehow George Lucas and some kind of space magic happened and here we are. Nine films in the, in the sagas, the trilogies, and then two others. Uh, Row One, which I adored being in, and a rather peculiar uh, film called um, Musical uh, the Clone Wars. No, no, oh, Clone Wars are fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, because when George eventually uh, did agree or decide to keep my voice, because you have to imagine with my head inside this costume, you, can you can't really hear what I'm saying. So all the words have to be put back on afterwards. And uh, fortunately, because he did use my voice, um, I had done. I would say hundreds of different projects, not just the movies, but always keeping 3PO in the right spirit, looking after him and his, well, I am his spokesperson here on this planet, so if I'm involved, then you get the real thing, and 3PO for me is sort of a real thing. He, he's not me, he's somebody I know very well. I don't want to spend all my time with him, I don't want to tell you that. But when I do, I feel pretty proud about it. And coming to a convention like this, to uh, Fan Expo, allows people to meet somebody from the movie, that they, the, the sagas, that they're connected with. I'm just a, if you like, a, a spokesperson for the, for the evening, for the event. But, and it brings back a flood of memories. Um, some good, some sad and poignant when family members are no longer there. The joy that people get out of these movies, the, uh, the extension of it to people, um, okay, they buy all the products and so on, uh, but they, they dress up, they meet people, they make friends, they sometimes marry. Sometimes, you know, uh, Darth Vader's doing the ceremony, they get so proud of the door. But it means so much. And it was all triggered by the timing when it came out in 1977 that the world was a different place. The world didn't know that it wanted this kind of new magic technology. Um, Do you have plans to? No. Right here. Do I have plans for what? Another, another to write any more comics? No, it was hard work. It was very difficult. It gave me a huge respect. Because the designers, the artists, I think writing the story is the easiest way. How you spread it literally across pages, how you, how you move the, the reader's eyes to the next picture, uh, was a revelation for me. Not one I want to read. Okay. Hey, uh, Uncle Dad here with Uncle Dad Socks. I'm just curious. There's this classic card that I own. It's the 1977 Tops Era card. Do you, what's the story behind that? How did that error happen? Well, uh, for those who, who have never seen this card, it, um, it was a legitimate picture taken of C3O, C3PO in the oil bath, which was one of the most curious pieces of uh, filming I've ever done, because I was actually uh, semi-submerged in um, vegetable oil. And what happened, Tops, uh, who make these cards, 
um, they had fired somebody, they had let him go, and he, this is the story I've learned, and he, in, in kind of funny vengeance, uh, repainted the car, because what had happened was the leg, one of the legs of the, the, the sticky tape was given out in the world, and so this leg had dropped, and the kind of pan section had made the shape, which he then extended to make it look as if Trippier was unnaturally excited <laughs> with Luke Skywalker along the beat with R2-D2, and those rumors were utterly untrue. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a neat trick, and it took me a while to work out, but he had painted in an extension. <laughs> I actually don't like it. I think it's rude and unpleasant to a great friend of mine. And, you know, it's like somebody insulting your mother. You don't like it. Yeah. So I'm sorry to be a prude, but um, I have never signed one. If you see a signed one, it's a forgery, like many uh, things that you can buy out of forgeries. And one of the great things about coming to Fan Expo is you can actually get a real signature uh, from my hand, you know, um, and know that it's real, rather than buying something on eBay where it kind of builds are. So, sorry, um, I can smile, but no. <laughs> right here, last question. Hello, my name is Steven from It's Recording Time Media. What do you remember most about playing a Legolas in the Lord of the Rings animated movie? <laughs> most people want to talk to me about um, about Star Wars, and even I forget that uh, I think the first, I'm going to say, I think the first iteration of um, uh, Lord of the Rings, not the book, was this very strange uh, film. Uh, and I remember... <laughs> It, it wasn't the greatest experience, and I remember when, yeah. Um, but what was curious, uh, that they didn't show me a, a, a concept painting of Legolas, Prince of the Elves. So I played it, um, and he turned out to be blonde, and I think I would have played it differently if I uh, it was blonde. All right. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.